A growing depression and declining living standards. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from the ABC just discussing, well, a survey of economists, the 2021 predictions. And we've got a lot of talk. Well, no, actually the talk of a V-shaped recovery seems to have disappeared, doesn't it? It seems to have disappeared. Is that narrative been removed from the media? And we'll have to have a look. I suspect, well, a weaker recovery getting weaker and declining living standards. I think this is going to be a shock to a lot of people. People's quality of life is going to take a hit. You've got generations that don't even know what a recession is, that have never worked in a recession. The majority of the workforce has not worked during a recession. Just let that sink in. So they haven't prepared for it. We saw with the huge Centrelink queues how many people were living hand to mouth. No mention of actually having an emergency fund. Our education system is atrocious. It's a joke when it comes to financial literacy. Did we get anything at school? Anything at university? It's terrible. So let's have a look at this. The picture of economic recovery painted by Prime Minister Scott Morrison is looking like a mirage. Well, no, I, I mean, here's the thing. I don't think he was... I think it was quite clear that we've got tough times ahead. The 22 leading economists polled by the conversation from 16 universities in seven states on average expect historically weak economic growth in all but one of the next five years with growth dwindling over time. Now, here's the thing you have to realize. Since the GFC, our growth has been below trend on a per capita basis. They've been propping up the GDP figures by having more and more people come to the country. And a lot of that increases demand. For, well, it's an initial boost to demand for housing. Then the, the net effect is kind of slightly positive. So just keep that in mind, particularly with how much of our wealth of our nation has been put into the property market. And they seem to be throwing everything at it again. Probably because it's all they know. Australian calendar year. Economy growth 2017 to 2024. So percent of percent actual and forecast. Okay, we can see here. So in June, Morrison promised to lift economic growth by more than one percentage point above trend through to 2025. Growth 1% above trend would average almost 4% per year. I, I, I can't see that happening. We haven't been there in a long time. Instead, the Conversations Economic Panel is forecasting annual growth averaging 2.4% over the next four years, much less than the long-term trend trailing off over time. You can see here, you know, it's going down. And this is what I'm saying. We've been growing below trend. So even if we have a recession, if the economy takes a hit for the next, you know, six months and then slides to creep up, if that growth is below trend for an extended period, that, that is a depressed economy. Everyone, that's a depressed economy. And all the tricks they've been doing to keep up the GDP going up, well, that's all not possible at the moment, is it? The results imply living standards will be 5% lower than the Prime Minister expects by 2025. The panel expects unemployment to peak around 10% and still be above 7% by the end of 2021. And remember, this is the ABS figures. Yeah. One rule of thumb is to double it to get the actual unemployment rate. It expects wages to climb barely at all by 0.9% in 2020, the lowest increase on record, and even less than the rate of inflation, which is expected to be 1.2%. I had a viewer, he sent me a, his uh, insurance, his home insurance for an investment property. And, you know, it had gone up 35%. So, you know, there you go. Boom, the RBA would love that inflation. But then he was a bit annoyed, so he shopped around and he went to, I think it was Amy, and he couldn't get a quote. They've stepped away from that market. It's going to be interesting. We need to keep an eye on the insurance sector, what's happening there, because there's going to be, well, they've, moved, they've jumped ship from adventure tourism. What other sectors are going to cop it? So it expects the share market to sink further in the rest of this year before climbing a touch in 2021. Non-mining business investment, on which much of Australia's recovery depends, should bounce back only 3.3% in 2021 after slipping 9.5% in 2020. 
The conversations panel comprises macroeconomists, economic modelers, former Treasury, IMF, OECD, Reserve Bank, and financial market economists, and a former member of the Reserve Bank Board. Several admitted to much greater uncertainty than usual. One pulled out saying, it's a mugs game right now. <laughs> it's really a mugs game right now. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. Every, everyone, every, you know, Tom, Dick and Harry can make their predictions, but we'll have to see what happens. We'll have to see what happens because the government can make such broad changes. They can intervene. Confidence is up, down, up, down, looking at the shot. Share market is all over the place. One who did, did take part despaired that forecasting had been reduced to guessing in the context of an unprecedented event. Several cautioned that climate change, along with the prospect of new waves of the pandemic, make five-year forecasts especially difficult. Why? I mean, climate change? Seriously? Come on, guys. The people that still think that's... Haven't, hasn't that all been mitigated due to less economic activity by people? Here's the thing. If Have a look at um, Lomberg's books on that look at the copenhagen consensus guys because they're more problems they're much greater problems we face they're much greater problems we face I, I believe um you know we'll have technocratic solutions to all of these issues and i think some of the primitive methods we're trying to address the climate are going to be laughed at in centuries to come like you know burning burning scrub for carbon credits that people sell to idiots i mean i mean good on you if you can make money doing it all of the panel expect incomes and production to shrink in the June quarter, the one finishing right now, after shrinking in the March quarter, meaning we'll be in a recession. Some are expecting a small bounce back in the September quarter, although they warned that if JobKeeper and JobSeeker supplement ended as planned at the end of September, economic activity will turn down again in the December quarter, creating what panelist and former Labour politician Greg Emerson describes as a W-shaped economic trajectory. Panelist Julie Thoth, Thoth, sorry, Julie Thoth cautions there is no magic via ahead. Without government action on adaption to climate change, productivity, industrial relations, inequality, and other matters, the best that can be hoped for is a partial recovery of some of the growth that has been lost. The panel expects the economy to recover only half of what is lost in 2021. After peak growth of 2.9%, Throughout 2023, it will return to where it was, having sacrificed three years of economic growth. <clears throat> three years of declining growth. We can see here, these are all the numbers that we've got. Predictions for forecast through to GDP. And we've got, you know, Mala at the bottom. Oh, no, sorry, at the highest, 0 0.5 growth, 1.5 and 2.3. And right at the bottom, Marino at negative 8. 7 and then 1.5. You got Keen here at negative 5, negative 10, negative 10. Okay, wait a minute. This how's this going all? Okay, this isn't in order. This isn't in order, but the average is 4.6% and then 2.5% growth and 1.7%. So Steve has the yep, he's the most pessimistic here. A 10% decline. I mean, that's that's pretty extreme. The panel expects China's economy to shrink by 2.3% this year before bouncing back by 4.4% 4 .4 in 2021. Now, that's different to the IMF. IMF are predicting they'll take a 5% hit. China will go down to only a 1%. Or are they, you know, their growth rate. Are they talking about growth rate or the economy to shrink? It expects the U.S. economy will shrink 5.6% before recovering only 22 Steve Keen suggests that the underlying U.S. performance will be even worse. It will have attained its measured performance by being prepared to live with adverse health consequences. Tony Markin notes that China's near-term economic growth is likely to be hampered by a move towards deglobalization in countries wanting their supply of goods and health equipment to be less reliant on China. We can see here predictions for Chinese and U.S. growth. Unemployment. The forecast for the peak unemployment rate range from present 7.1% to 12%, with most of the panel expecting the peak before the end of the year. Julie points out points our that out that even with no further job losses, which seems unlikely, 
The unemployment rate will continue to rise for some time as people who have stopped looking for work start looking again and return to being counted as unemployed. That's the thing. If you've given up looking, you're not participating in the workforce. And we can see here the different predictions of unemployment. What's the average? Is 8.8, then December 7.2, and then the peak at 9.6. Who's the highest peak? Uh, Jeffrey at 10.5, 10.5, 10.5, 12%. Margaret. There we go, 12%. Living standards. The panel expects household income and spending to fall by about 4% over the course of the year. The best measure of living standards, real net natural national disposable income per capita should fall 4.5 percent just think about that australian living standards are going to go down they're going to go down i mean, here we go household spending 20 percent what's the disposable income worst case negative 10 4.5 is the average i don't know what the point of averaging these different predictions are. i mean it is you know people are saying it's a mugs game real wages a key component of living standards are expected to fall Never in the 23-year 23 23 history, history of the ABS has annual wage growth fallen much below 2%. Until now, the lowest annual growth has been one9 The panel is forecasting growth of just 0.9% throughout 2020, a mere half of the previous record low. The forecast calls into question the timing of the current legislated increase in compulsory superannuation contributions of 0.5% of salary per year over five years scheduled to start in July 2021. That will eat into wage growth. This is what people don't get. This is what people, idiots, just don't understand. You know, I, I think the problem is a lot of people have got no experience in running a business and the challenges that are faced. A lot of them are in our parliament. That's the problem. You know, managing a union isn't the same as managing a business, everyone. Because when you know you, you're paying someone to package well above award, guaranteed, and oh, you've got to pay them more super. Okay, well, sorry. Sorry, uh, you know, Jimmy, you're getting less take-home pay because that's now in your super. Don't complain to me, complain to the government. They're demanding that you are too dumb to save your own money to spend it how you want. So they want to put it in the hands of the retail, you know, the banking-controlled super funds or the union-controlled super funds. They're your masters. They have your money, you know. Headline price inflation should be only 1.2%. And underlying smooth inflation only one percent but both will be above wage growth shrinking the buying power of wages so here we go you know wages and prices share market this will be good the spectacular recovery in the australian share market up 29 percent since late march after citing 36 percent since late Fe february is not expected to continue this year the panel expects the asx 200 to end the year down eight percent before climbing 2.3 percent in 2021 but the forecast for 2021 fan out a wide range from a fall of 10 percent to a rise of 10 percent housing i mean you can see here look at there what they're predicting i mean it's all over the place guys it's all over the place housing sydney and melbourne house prices are expected to reverse their gains of five percent and three percent in the first half of the year to close about where they started we can see here median house price the average is negative four negative 1.3 the worst is negative 10 and negative 11. New home buildings expected to plunge a further 10% this year after sliding 10% in 2019. On balance, it is not expected to improve at all in 2021, although the range of forecasts is wide from a recovery of 10% to a decline of 10%. Businesses, I mean, you can see here again. Mining investment is expected to continue to recover in 2020 and 2021 after huge falls between 2014 and 19, brought about by the collapse of the infrastructure boom and the completion of several large liquefied national natural gas projects non-mining business investment is expected to fall 9.5 percent throughout 2020 before inching back 3.3 percent in 2021 you can see here what's the average negative 9.5 3 and then 4.9 and we got quite a range the australian dollar is forecast to end the year near its present 69 us cents after initially diving to a low of 59 US cents as the pandemic crisis unfolded, it and other currencies climbed against the US dollar from late March as the US responded, response to the crisis faltered. The price of iron ore has climbed from late March to a high of 103 US dollars, well above the US $55 assumed in last year's budget paper. The panel is expecting most of those gains to be kept, forecasting US 97 by the end of the year, enough to provide one of the few welcome pieces of news for farmers of the October budget. Again, 
The range of forecast is wide at 65 a tonne to 110 a tonne. Government finance. After ending 2018-19 almost in balance, the budget deficit is expected to blow out between 130 billion and 150 billion in 1920, weighed down by the same amount of stimulus payments. The forecast for 21-22 are centered on 150 and 100 billion respectively. It's a hard outcome to pick, in part because it depends on both the needs of the economy and government decisions about how to respond to them. In a report issued on Monday, the Grattan Institute called for the government to spend an extra $70 billion over two years. Forecasts for 21-22 budget outcome range from a de deficit of $400 billion to a deficit of just $10 billion. We'll see. We'll see. It'll be easy to finance. The panel is forecasting a 10-year borrowing cost bond rate of just 1.4% per year, and it doesn't expect it to decline even that high until 2021. At the moment, it's 0.9%. The Reserve Bank has committed itself to buying as many bonds as needed to keep it low. The three major rating agencies have reaffirmed Australia's AAA credit rating. So it's a survey of first. The 2021 survey is the first in 30 years not to ask for forecasts of the Reserve Bank cash rate. Well, yeah, there's kind of, kind of no point to do it, isn't it? And the first since it has been published by the conversation not to ask for the probability of a recession. The Reserve Bank, bank's decision to push the cash rate as low as it conceivably could and leave it there for three years remove the need for the first. Australia's descent into recession removed the need for the second. The forecaster, who proved to be the most far-sighted on the recession, was Steve Keane, who assigned a 75% probability of a recession in January at a time when Australia was dealing with bushfires and preparing to deal with the pandemic. There you go. Other forecasters to assign a high probability to a recession were Julie, Steve, Warren, and Richard. There you go. There you go. So Steve was, well, he won the bet, didn't he? He gets the carton. What do you all think, everyone? What do you think? Do you think there's a generation prepared for reduced living standards? And what do you think about these predictions? As always, please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve and KuCoin. You can buy our merch from Heiser Says. You can support us via Gold Pass or use PayPal. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next time. <laughs>